I'm Oliver Slope with Blue Line Futures coming to you from the Chicago Board of Trade with another episode of Tech Talk. It is Friday, October 8th, and we've got a couple markets for you here today. Corn, soybeans, uh, going to just briefly touch on cotton and oats because they've caught a lot of attention here as of late. And then we'll wrap things up uh, with the live cattle market. And without further ado, we'll kind of get into the grain side of things. Um, uh, a weaker session. We came into the morning slightly higher in corn and soybeans. That, that optimism faded. I think a lot of people were expecting China to show up in some flash sales now that they're back from their golden uh, week, which is their holiday. And they weren't there. And I think that was a disappointment to the market and led to some selling here into the weekend as the longer term trend and overall fundamentals continue to remain heavy. But one thing we've been talking about in our daily reports, which we've got pulled up here on the left hand side, as well as in our recent interviews with RFD TV and AgriTalk, is that there's going to be a lot of opportunities for shorter term trades on both sides of the market. It's just that time of year where I think we see a lot more chop as opposed to a outright directional trade. Now, potentially next week's USDA report will be the catalyst to give the market a nudge uh, one way or the other. But for now, uh, we're continuing to play the chop and again, think there's opportunity for market participants on both sides of the market. Uh, we got December corn pulled up here and this is a chart that we showed earlier in the week uh, in our tech talk. And we basically finished right smack dab in the middle of this uh, kind of pivot pocket, which comes in near 530. If the bulls fail to defend 530, probably just pay, takes us back down to the middle of the range near 520. You can see here that kind of the recent range bound trade has been 520, give or take to 540, give or take. And we finished the week kind of smack dab in the middle. So I think you want to be selling the top end of that and looking to buy the bottom end of that. And knowing where those ranges are gives you a pretty good risk reward uh, idea of the parameters on that front. So that's what we're looking at for corn. Now, moving over to the soybeans, this has been a more well-defined downtrend. But on Monday, in our daily report, uh, as well as on RFD TV, we talked about the, the overall sentiment in this market is overly bearish. Everybody's on the same side of the boat. Yes, the fundamentals are bearish. Yes, the technicals are bearish. But everybody knows this. And a lot of times, if everyone's bearish, there's no more sellers left in the market. So what you start to see is a little bit of short covering, which we saw early in the week and again in the overnight session and early morning trade. We got up the first technical resistance this morning and uh, we kind of laid it out in this morning's Grain Express, which goes out to clients. Before the open every morning, we wrote, uh, the market has rallied into our first resistance pocket this morning. We have defined that in recent reports as 12.59 and three quarters to 12.62 and three quarters. If you had bought the dip earlier in the week, this is a spot to consider reducing long exposure or moving your stop higher. Uh, and that's if you had bought the dip. If you're bearish, these you know, technical resistance pockets obviously work. It's a good risk reward uh, trade on the sell side. Uh, we came off pretty darn good towards the end of the day. I think we finished about 20 cents off the high and are kind of threatening the low end of the range. Today's reversal certainly puts the, the bears back in the driver's seat ahead of next week's USDA report. A break and close below this week's low near 1231 really opens the door for potential retests of the 1180. So next week is going to be a, a big week for the soybean market as far as the technical uh, outlook goes. Now, moving over to the cotton market, I just kind of want to briefly touch on these. These might be uh, markets that you want to put on your radar if you haven't already. We've seen a just uh, monumental move to the upside from all the way from about 88 to 90 area all the way up to 116 and just trading in a ridiculous range. Volatility creates more volatility. And I think this market has overshot to the upside that doesn't mean the top is in. If you're going to try to step in front of this, you're going to want to be sure to manage your risk uh, because this is one of those markets and it kind of goes with oats too. I'll pull that up uh, as well. Just straight to the upside and, and potentially overshooting itself. And this goes to the, the old saying, the markets can remain irrational a lot longer than you can remain solvent. So trying to be a hero and pick a top, that's fine if you want to do that, but be sure to manage your risk and don't get married to a trade. And also, if you're going to do this, don't use the normal position sizing that you would for a market that trades in a five to 10 cent range throughout the day. 
uh, you know, be a little bit more cognizant of the fact that uh, these things can run a lot longer and further than you might think. So that's the grain side of things. Wrapping things up as promised with the live cattle market. We've got the D slide cattle. We had a heck of a rally here this week. I think we finished up about five bucks and this is something we talked about throughout the week. Um, and it, it's right in line with what we touched on on soybeans where this market was so overwhelmingly bearish uh, that there just wasn't anywhere one else to sell. And I think a lot of the bad news baked into the cake. So you get a short covering rally. We got out above the 200 day moving average and that brought us back to kind of this pivot pocket area near 130, which is what we talked about all week as being a spot to reduce long exposure if you had bought in uh, the dip earlier in the week. If you want to be bearish this market, this is not a bad spot uh, to try the short side. If we break out above here, you know, take your medicine and move on. There's pretty good risk reward uh, scenario set up here to the short side. But again, you're going to want to manage your risk appropriate, appropriately. So that's what we're looking at. That's what you should be looking at, too. This has been Oliver Slope with Blue Line Futures from the Chicago Board of Trade. Remember, trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. I hope you have a great weekend.